Okay, Wednesday, March 16th. I'm in the center of Lviv just taking a walk. Uh, so we had two air raid sirens yesterday, but they were short-lived. So, you know, it's been getting quieter again after the attack on Yarorev. But uh, that's, uh, we're still reeling from it. You know, it's uh, really hitting home. And now, you know, we saw that some Polish Prime Minister, I think Czech or Hungarian Prime Minister, a couple of Prime Ministers went directly to Lviv to talk to Zelensky. Um, and even the Polish Prime Minister talked about uh, getting NATO involved. That's good news. But then we also saw in the negotiations, Zelensky made a very profound statement that uh, Ukraine is not seeking NATO membership. So uh, I don't know if that means the negotiations are getting closer to some resolution. But it seems like the Russians are still, you know, from what I'm reading, are, you know, unyielding and uncompromising. So I think all we can hope is at least that both sides are still talking. You know, so at least uh, at least people are still talking. You know, that's that's all that's good there. I'm seeing a lot of journalists around here, but, you know, I'm noticing the news. It looks like Ukraine is slowly slipping out of the 24-hour news cycle. You know, so I'm not uh, sure... Um, we got to keep it in the news cycle, but I don't know how to do that. I don't have the resources to keep something in the news cycle. But uh, I hope, I hope, uh, you know, it, it doesn't get forgotten in two weeks, like everything else that's news, you know, and until the next exciting thing comes along, whatever that may be. But uh, yeah, that's a bit worrisome. I mean, the talk of chemical weapons now is uh, getting more and more. Russians are trying to create a false situation. So that's actually got me thinking. I've already um, looking to go to Poland next month, reserved a room on Airbnb and need a little break from here. So I think in about a month we'll be heading out to Poland, maybe sooner if this uh, talk of chemical weapons increases because there's nothing you can really do about it. Even a gas mask won't help you with modern weapons. You have to let this train pass. So. Um, yeah, it's uh, the same news. I don't really have much here from a personal point of view. I'm just uh, kind of talking about the things that caught my uh, attention. Here, let me just get my notes out. I just got a few things that caught my attention here. So, yeah, what's really concerning to me and that we're not hearing about is the, is the Black Sea. Let me let this train pass. It's noisy. Yeah, so... Yeah, we're hearing a lot about the Black Sea. You know, the, I'm not hearing a lot about it. There's a big naval buildup in the um, in the Black Sea coast. And uh, in addition to a no-fly zone, they also need a no-sailing zone. These ships are, they could devastate Odessa. You know, I don't know, there's like 11 warships I heard off the Ukrainian coast. And we're not hearing anything about Ukraine asking for some naval assistance. You know, I'm a former Navy officer, so it's a little bit more near and dear to me. Um, according to Fox News, this could all be over in 10 days because the Russians are running out of supplies. But then there's another news report on CNN that the Russians are resupplying, taking units from the Russian Far East and bringing them forward. So everything is mixed. It's all, all mixed news. You know, it's a mixed bag here. You know, we saw, um, I saw a report in the, in the feeds, in the Telegram feed that the, um, they found a Russian uh, food convoy or food truck or a mobile kitchen and the menu is potatoes, onions and pickles. You know, it's uh, actually I think you can live on that, but I think it's pretty boring and it doesn't boost the morale. You know, the um, ready-made food in the U.S. military is actually pretty good and kind of gives a little bit of a morale boost, you know, that you have something somewhat tasty in the field. So these psychological factors may hinder the Russians more and these foreign fighters that they're trying to recruit from Syria. You know, um, again, it's just, it's all so crazy. But uh, my, my biggest concern now is this uh, buildup off the Black Sea. This, um, to me, Odessa is a much more important city than even Kiev. It's an economic uh, port. You know, it's all the stuff goes in and out of Odessa. You know, and that's uh, Ukraine's lifeline, you know, economic lifeline. So I don't know why we don't hear more about doing something about these ships and getting some weapons in here. Because uh, those ships, if you look at the videos, if you search them up online, they're having a lot of missile 
uh, you know, holders and everything on the side. I mean, they look like they can do a lot of damage. I don't, I don't, I don't know the ship types. I've been out of the Navy for so long, but I had all the Russian ships memorized at one point and knew what their capabilities are. But they look like the old Slava class um, missile cruisers. That's why I want to say they're, they're missile cruisers. So surface to surface missile cruisers and they could lay waste to Odessa, you know, um, all the architecture and infrastructure. I mean, you know, uh, maybe it's just a revenge. So it's really, it's really hard to tell, you know, here. But yeah, right now I really got these chemical weapons on my mind, like how to, how to react to this, because Russians are crazy enough to, to use them and they could justify it. But anyway, that's all I got today. Um, let's try to keep this in the news. You know, I, I just hope this 24-hour news cycle doesn't shift away from Ukraine anytime soon. Anyway, take care.